Today we're doing some bailing, so let's go and see how we're going to do it. So the round bales are in the shed and done. So we've just blown the round baler down and that can go back in the shed. Now we're going to put the square baler on and go and do some square baling. So we're going to couple up now. We need to change this hook to that one there because that hook doesn't fit that bull. There, like that. Then this goes in there, like that. Then that pin goes back in there. Like that. Now that hook will fit on that ball. Take this off, because that's a different type of shaft. We want the big thousand shaft. Let them fall off. And then here is the wide angle PTO joint. Get my hands covered. It did get greased, but I'm gonna grease it again inside there. Make sure everything's lubricated. Ah, this is really heavy and difficult as well. So that goes on there. Then pull that back. Ah, that's it on. So how does the baler work? We'll start at this end. This is the pressure pipe, pickup pipe, brakes, lights, and I've just got to plug them into the tractor. They sit in the tractor cab. And then this one here is the oil return. So feed, oil back. So it all goes around in a big circle and just keeps circulating all the time. These are all the different takeoff points. PTO shaft, power takeoff shaft it stands for. Goes up here, up there like that. And then it turns this big flywheel, this huge, huge flywheel. So, you know, and that that's also drives a little fan pump, but I can turn that. That's, that's a slip clutch. Inside here is a huge gearbox. Just there. So the straw comes along here, hits these fingers. These fingers then lift it up into here and these fingers here pull it round and in like here those are those fingers that pull it round and in They're, they go like that just round and pull it all up and this thing here is called the stuffer so it cut all the straw comes into this bit here and these bits go in and shove it up there into the bale chamber which is is behind here that gearbox we were just looking at is in here. These are the stuffer arms, just here like that. And they stuff the big ram backwards and forwards, up and down. The string is all held in here, all this side and all the other side. So we've got four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 rolls this side and 16 rolls the other side. And that's how long it is, 3,000 meter roll, uh, 3,000 meters for a pack. That's a lot of string it holds on here. And then if we look around here, so here's the chamber. Let's have a look inside of it. So that straw stuffs up into this chamber and then that big ram forces it back into here. And then these things here, they, they crush it and the strings around it, I'll show you how the strings go on. So these are the knotters just here. We're going to have a look at them working in the field because they're quite hard to explain how they work. But the strings tie off just here. You can just see the strings there. All six of them. These are the oilers. Give them a bit of oil every now and again. Like that. More slip clutches down that side. Uh, this is the fan blower. I need to give this a bit of a wash really. There's the knotter blower. That blows air along here. And it keeps air blowing along there to keep all the, keep it all clean so we can uh, see what's uh, going on. But right, let's go and do some. Hold it still, though. Yeah. <laughs> Hear those tyres. <laughs> they're such big tyres. When you get going at 55k, they just pop out of the ground. 
coming down the farm track because this isn't my baling today that we're starting with we're doing a little bit of linseed for somebody else so now we're stuck behind this little old class combine oh no we're not cause we're going in this gateway and we go linseed straw don't really enjoy baling this but We're looking for the string, we've had a problem. I've turned the pressure up too high and it's burst the bale. So now we're gonna pull the strings out. Where are they? I can't see them, where are they? Usually laying underneath of it. I don't wanna drive over it with it and rebale it because the strings all get wrapped around a pickup hitch. So I think we're getting there now, aren't we? Yeah? Oh, sorry, yeah. This one really wants to be around the 2000 PSI mark but it keeps going up to nearly 3,000 PSI so it's a bit um, I keep having to adjust the pressure it's possibly because the back of the bale is rusty so it creates more friction as the bales coming out the uh, coming out the chute so it like it makes it go like can't go out as fast and you know when when all the sides are all nice and shiny when it's had loads of bales through it they slip out nice and easy so I have to keep messing around with the uh, with the pressures at the moment Whilst the wife drives the tractor, we can demonstrate at a safe distance from the machine how it works. This is the pickup. You can see that the arms inside there going around like that. And then obviously it's going through there, up there, and then it's crap push, pushing it back. You'll see it push it out in a sec. There you go. Obviously, what the faster you go, the better it is. How, how tough are these bales? Oh yeah. Oh look, there's the combine. Then up there is where the magic happens. Obviously it ties a knot so I can put this uh, camera on a stick up there, on a gimbal stick that I've bought, and you'll be able to see it knot as well. So is it going to come out? There we go, another bit comes out. See a bit more. Another one will come in there. Will it go? There we go, next bit come out. This linseed is like wire. It's very difficult to bale and get pressure in the bales. It's literally like wire wool. We bailed earlier. We're just going to hopefully, oh, it's bulldozing it all up. Hopefully, we're going to try and drive over it and re bale it because I don't want to get out and try and pull it all to bits because I'm lazy. Come on, come on, that's it. Oh, oh no, no, it's pushing the wheel. Look, need four wheel drive, four wheel drive engaged. Up we go. Oh, I hope the bale, this is going to block the baler up, isn't it? Or it's going to snap a shear bolt. If this baler can take this, 
Massey Ferguson, when they make bailers, they're possibly the best bailers in the world. Oh, look at that. It's having it. Go on. Don't force it too much. It's going in slowly. Ooh. Yeah, so I've, I have actually blocked it up, but if we uh, go into here and set it onto 540, we're now just going to, because I don't want to get out, I'm just going to give it a few revs. This is usually end up making the baler catch fire, getting the slip clutch too hot, but, oh look, it, it's going. Can you see them? Look, it's going. Come on, let's give it a bit more. Come on, come on, come on. We've now blocked the baler, so but neither of us want to get out. That's the problem, because it's a Saturday and we don't want to get our hands uh, dirty. Have you got any suggestions, dear? Why don't we apply maximum power? Excellent choice, maximum it is. Uh, that, look, a little bit of power, that's all it needed. It's done, bail's gone. Right, we're about, just these last few rows and we're about done. Hey, Zoo. Oh, Open okay. the sunroof, oh. you best get out picking all the little bits up now uh, the wife's out of the cab because there was a funny smell of methane in here so she's gone for a little walk so there we have um, what we've been doing what we've been doing today had a little look at the baler thanks to the camera mount um, had a look around the baler and it working so not something you'd see every day so yes very pleased got this got this all done now we're gonna move on to baling a little bit of barley and the next harvest I think we're going to be doing a bit of wheat. So keep stay tuned for that and I'll see you all very soon. Cheers.